But in your book, you do talk about the importance of concentric, so the, the contraction and the eccentric muscle contractions working together um, or doing yeah. both, doing both. Mm -hmm. um, why is it so important that we get that eccentric for, for, for our bodies? Because we would well, love to avoid it if we could. Yeah. As, as so, so if you avoid the eccentric part of the of the, the muscle contraction, you are effectively breaking my number one rule, which is muscles lengthen before they ah, contract. There we go. So right. if we change eccentric and concentric to lengthen eccentric and shorten concentric, um, then you are immediately limiting yourself to one side of the coin rather than the whole coin. Okay. Um, and. Um, I would say, and it's fair to say, I've actually I've got a paper somewhere that eccentric has as bad a rep as pronation. Oh, really? So I am saying that pronation is important. I'm also saying that eccentric is important. Um, and so you, you can see sometimes the wider community, how they might look in and go, this guy's just a bozo. Um, <laughs> but if muscles tear in a lengthened space, mm -hmm. and so the, the, it's always in the eccentric action that, that a muscle tearing would take place so we're already putting people on the back foot already with this conversation yes but um if you are if you forget the muscles and you go for the joint movement mm -hmm. and the um, the reason i would tear a muscle as it is lengthening is because the joint that it is attached to is doing more work than it should yes Whereas if we can get the joints to team up and they all do the amount that they're supposed to, it will actually create an impossibility to be for a muscle to be too long. Yeah. So I get the optimum amount of lengthening. The optimum amount of lengthening as the muscle lengthens creates yes. a response in the brain for the brain to say, well, that joint's gone far enough now. I'll send a message to the muscle to contract. So it contracts from its lengthened position and brings the joint back in the other direction. Yeah. Then that joint enters a state of what we call momentum as it swings forward, um, while the energy flips into the muscles on the other side of the joint to eccentrically lengthen and control and control that. And Amazing. so, yeah. again, if we go back to a yoga class and we do our stretches or if we do static stretching, one of my rants in the book was that static stretching doesn't work. Yeah. Um, and the reason I say that is because we have, well, classically, the one for me was always um, finish a PT session, lay someone on the back, stretch the hamstring, hamstrings yeah. are short. Off they go for a week, they come back, stretch the hamstring, three times, three sessions a week after each one, stretch the hamstring, like, Jesus, when is this hamstring stretch going to kick in? <laughs> when is it actually going to be effective? And then, and then you go, oh, well, the hamstring attaches to the pelvis, so pelvic movement's important. Hamstring attaches to the lower limb, the um, tibia and fibula. So lower limb movement's important. Lower limb attaches to the talus and the foot. So foot position is really important. Oh, hang on. We need to affect the foot, the ankle, the knee, the hip, the pelvis, just to be able to speak to the hamstring. Mm -hmm. And there's two leg shapes that we can make. One is a pronating shape where, that we, you beautifully described earlier. Pressure's rolling inwards, knee bending, yep. pelvis tilting. Yep. And there's an opposite leg shape called a supination leg, which is where the pressures move towards the outside and back, knee straightens, Femur yeah. externally rotates, pelvis, pelvis tilts back again. If we can, a bit similar to the cogs in the spine, if we can implement, make this happen yes. in all three dimensions and we can get those two movements I described in the leg happening, you, you create a huge opportunity for yourself. And and um, and in in that, you know, they're the two things, uh, the two things that I have available for people to take ownership of their body are focused on those very two mm. conversations that we've just had there. So mm. amazing. I'm not saying it won't be frustrating and it won't be arduous and it <laughs> won't be it, yeah. it, because it is like it, it is. Um, but if, if we, if we stop this idea of working on our body, stretch it, strengthen it and work with our body and go, what yes. does it need? What should it be able to do? What can it do? What am I not doing that it could do yeah. and, and start tapping into those spaces? I think you have a, um, you, you have a really, again, good opportunity to, to enjoy it again absolutely um, and a lot of people don't um i get asked a lot of time have you, have you ever been in pain and, I'm, and then when i started all of this 
it was horrendous. I lived in a world of pain. Um, I skied, had big accidents, did all kinds of stupid stuff on a pair of skis um, and sought practitioners to help me, you know, fix me. Nobody could fix me. And, and I am the living breath of taking ownership of your own body because I mm -hmm. had to, I had to do yeah. that. I was, I was out. Um, and this, this really set me free. I had an opportunity, not only while I was trying to work it out, I'm exploring all of these sequences in my body and, and magical things were happening. So yeah. um, I, I, if I could do it on my own, I think anyone could do it on my own. Yeah. But now you have guidance, which I, did, <laughs> I didn't yeah. have. So yeah. I got, you know, stumbled kind of lucky. There's one thing I want to touch on, because I know you said that was the last question, but um, yeah. you said something earlier about ankles subluxing yes. quite a lot. Yes. Yeah, um, and so, I just mentioned that in, I just yeah. mentioned that in that eccentric space. Did you have a yeah. question related to that? Or? No, no. I was just going to say, you know, that's really for our listeners. A lot of them will be listening, thinking, you know, my ankles sublux all the time. I can't even, you know, walk to the end of my street without wearing an ankle brace or my feet totally, you know, ankle subluxing oh, wow. all the time. Okay. So, working around the foot and how to improve that, if you would be, you know, amazing. Yeah. Well, because I, I just mentioned there was that idea, uh, which is what reminded me, but I was talking about you asking about the eccentric contraction. And yes. and I said the only way that that tissue can tear is if there's if there's too much movement in that particular space that that muscle has to manage. Yes. The only reason you have too much movement somewhere is because there's not enough movement somewhere else. Oh. So you have this faulty exchange. And now if everything moves together beautifully as it should, they all move perfectly. Nothing mo moves too much. Nothing moves too little. Nothing moves too quick. Nothing moves too slow. But as, th as things imbalance, you have this happening. So you move. This is moving too quick. This is not moving yeah. fast enough. This yes. isn't moving at all. This is moving too far left. This is going yeah. right to compensate. This is happening all the time in the body. Yeah. Um, and I, I think... It, it's a nice way to round round it all off, but I I, I say I I don't believe in the body having a dysfunction. I believe it is one hundred percent functional all the time. I believe yes. that you can't add anything to it or take anything away from it. You can just reduce its access. Yes. Um, and so with these ankles, if your foot is is unable to move, and and also you've you've got this hypermobility. Um, mm -hmm going on then you, you're less likely to be able to control movements as somebody who, exactly. who doesn't if you've, you've got the Ellis Danlos etc but yes. in order to reduce in order to reduce the risk of that if if my 33 bones in my foot can't move they're really not moving and this mm -hmm. is the irony of hypermobile is that there are areas that are hypomobile oh absolutely so you have this is a huge part of it I think where yeah. you've got this is too much yeah. And it's way too much. And this is draws your attention. Whoa, how, you can do that. Yeah. Um, but the other areas of the foot that don't move, of course, they have very much less attention at drawing. That's right. um, Absolutely. But of course, sig a significant factor. So if we've got 33 joints in the foot that don't move very well, mm -hmm. you can start to see how suddenly the ankle, if it's got movement yeah. potential and laxity, uh, it's, that's got the potential to, to be the... the the, the guy that the, takes the all weak the link strain. in the chain yeah or takes the hit exactly that's yeah. that's put the put it the phrase perfectly yeah and and so wouldn't it be a decent opportunity to spend some time mobilizing the foot bones getting mm -hmm. the tissues of the foot to what we call wake up and we use that wake up because it's speaking to the lay person most yes trained professionals know that these nothing switches off and is ever asleep yeah um, but what i do say is that joint motion gives the muscle something to do so if there is the less joint motion there is the less response the muscle needs to give so the, if there's no movement there the brain may not yeah. even register it as as being present yes so if wow. you're sat in a room room now the things around you that aren't moving you will have dismissed those because they're not a threat to you anymore the areas yeah. that move a lot that's where all yeah. the focus is yeah that's why i keep moving my hands so you remember i'm here <laughs> <laughs> well that's um, um gosh, so that's, this compensation uh, yeah. This compensation is is huge, and and it's the movements of a lot that draw our attention, draw yeah. our focus. But of course, they may have to move a lot because of other areas that are moving a little. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so, if we switch our attention to the areas that move a little, um, we may we may yeah. improve our chances of reducing the the excess in in those spaces. Yeah. Because basically, you have to steal it, don't you? If you're not moving in yeah. one place, you'll steal it from another. 
Um, yeah, just borrow from Peter to pay Paul, I think yeah, is the phrase. Yeah, yeah, it? yeah. Yeah. Wow, yeah, that's yeah. just and amazing. Paul, Paul's very rich and very unhappy. <laughs> yeah, exactly, and in pain, he's in pain.